welcome back to 40 TV. I'm your host, 40. So guys, I have a really cool tutorial for you today. I'm going to take this green screen footage right here and we are going to make a silhouette. Let me bring up VLC real quick and I'll show you what the footage looks like that I took from a green screen in my living room. You'll notice <laughs> with the shadow here, it is not lit perfectly. I've got some outside light coming in. I do have two lights on it. I, I needed another light above me, but I was being lazy and I didn't set it up. So it is what it is. Let me just go ahead and play this. All right, so as you're marveling at my dancing skills and that face I'm making, <laughs> let me show you. The first thing we're gonna do is we are going to turn it into a white silhouette, uh, a black and white silhouette, right? So boom, this is basically taken from that footage. The next thing I'll show you is how to add a more interesting background. This is still the same exact thing. And then if you really wanna kick it up a notch, let's go crazy. Add some volumetric light. We've got some uh, circles in the background that are moving with the music, et cetera, et cetera. I'll go ahead and stop this. I'll minimize it. And we are in After Effects. I already have the green screen footage, footage, load, footage, footage, <laughs> loaded. I mean, sometimes I'm speaking, the words want to come. Anyway, so I have the green screen footage loaded. I have it inside of a composition by the same name. And down in the composition, we want to come over here to effects and presets and select key light. Key light is the keyer from After Effects, right? So let me tell you this before we move on. You can do this in Final Cut. You can do this in Premiere. All you need to make sure is that you have a keyer and then something to colorize your footage, right? So first things first, we're gonna take the color picker in key light, we'll come over here, and I'm gonna take one of the shadows that you see here. Here, the green is lighter, here there's more shadows, so if I select this, it will probably automatically uh, select the lighter green footage. So somewhere where it's a bit darker and we'll see we're here, right? If we change over here from final result to uh, screen matte, we're gonna see what our matte looks like, cool. We're not worried about the outside, oops. You know these, uh, these mice, right? These Apple mice, you touch the top and it auto zooms, right? So we'll go ahead and select fit over here in the menu and bada bing, bada boom. So we are going to mask out the part that doesn't have the green screen on it, right? So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is probably bump up the screen gain. If we bump this up to, I don't know, 118, something like that, that's probably fine in this scenario, right? Next, the screen balance. Let's take it from 50 to 100 and Let's drop down into the pre, uh, screen pre-blur pre and set this to 11.6. How did I arrive at these numbers? To be honest, this is one of the final uh, numbers I adjusted because first I came into the screen mat and I changed the clip black and the clip white and I adjusted those and I kept changing them huh? because I, what I was looking for as I adjusted this, I ended up going with 40 for the clip black and for the clip white, I selected 65. But it looked better before it hit these numbers. However, as I scrubbed through the timeline, there were parts, and there's still gonna be a part, right? Let's get to it so you can see. Where are you? Maybe a part under my arm, ready? Right there, you see this? This is a shadow that is being picked up. It only happens in this particular clip for a second, and modifying these numbers even further are either gonna cut into the edge of my uh, mat, or it's just not gonna look as good. So I decided to leave it in the final. If your background ends up being uh, pure white, then obviously this is gonna be super noticeable, but again, it only happens for a second. What are ways that you could fix this? Light your green screen better. If I had a rim light or a top light, that would have made it so that this didn't happen, huh? So anyways, next, why don't we zoom out a little bit? Right now, this is at 100%. I'll drop it to 50. I'll come up here to the shape tool of a rectangle. While I have this layer selected, if I click and I drag here, then what I'm doing is I'm drawing a, ma uh, a mask, right? So next, I'll click over to my selection tool, I'll double click on one of these edges, and as I drag this out, I can see that I want it to be roughly here. So now I have this mask applied to this layer and it's set to add, right? That's exactly what we want. I'm gonna switch from the screen mat to the final result, and there we are. I am now keyed out. If we scrub through this footage, I'll change this from full to half so it scrubs a little bit better. We can see I've got the moves going and I am separated from the background. To prove this to you, we're gonna come over here, we're gonna right click, go to new, solid, and let's set it to be white. And we'll just call this white BG, right? For background. 
When I press enter, it's on top of my keyed footage, so I'm gonna drop it below, and boom, I'm basically here with a white background. That's exactly what we wanted. However, we wanna turn me into a silhouette, so we need to do something to change me, right? So let's come over here. We can do that with lots of different color correctors, but curves is pretty easy. We'll select color correction curves. And by the way, if I come to my project, you'll see we're working in 32 bits per channel, right? So you're gonna get really clean stuff. There's more color information there. And that's exactly what we want. I'll drop this on the silhouette layer. And now in the effect controls for the curve, I can come up here and select. This is my lights, drag this all the way down. Boom, I'm a silhouette, yo. <laughs> <laughs> it's as easy as that. Now, if I go ahead and play, there we go. Now, obviously, right now, it's slowing down, dropping frames, because what's happening is it's trying to build a preview, but we can scrub through. We get an idea. This is what it's looking like. You saw the final result, and we are there for the white background. Let's say we wanted this to be the blue background that I used. I'll then come over here. Uh, and Anyways, we can leave the white BG and just add... A ramp, a gradient ramp. Let's drag this over here on top. When we do that, we are gonna change from a linear ramp to a radial ramp. And after we do that, what we wanna do is change the end of the ramp. Plus we wanna change these colors, right? So the first color, I think, uh, how did I have this set? I think I had dark blue for the first one. So somewhere like, uh, I don't know, something like this or I don't know how dark it was, something like that. And then the next one was black. I'll come over here, set this to black. That's looking cool. However, we want to change where the end of this ramp is. And I think what I used in my particular scenario was 20, uh, 2315. And how do you come up with these values, right? It's not like I arbitrarily wrote it. But as we drag this around, we're going to see how this affects and changes our... Uh, our radial uh, gradient, right? Next, you know, it's, and I'll leave it here. It doesn't even have to be 2315, right? The next number, uh, 1080, that looks good. However, we can also drag this and we can change where this is happening, right? So maybe somewhere uh, at uh, around 1080 was fine, give or take. But also if we come and we drop this down, now that the center, the, the start of the radiant, ray the start of the radial gradient is happening from the center and now there's a blue circle and it's kind of it looks like it's kind of like a, a vignette applied if you will right so that's looking pretty cool um and we could leave it there right however what i also did to give this some interest is i came over to the effects and presets and let's go ahead and type in turbulence right we come over to distort turbulence displacement and let's drag it and drop it underneath under these values, I change the amount to 125, the size to 200, and complexity to 10, right? Let's go ahead and bump this up to a fit, and then let's change this from half to full. And let me show you on and off what's happening. We're basically, it's clouding up. It's giving it kind of like a, a photographic background, and that looks pretty cool, right? How did I get to those numbers? I played with the sliders. Obviously, I didn't want there to be introductions of black like this, so I found something where it didn't introduce too much of the, uh, the black color, and it just kind of dirtied it up, made it kind of look like cloudy, whatever, and I like that, right? Obviously, set it to whatever you want, right? And this is how I did the version with just the blue background. This is, it's just this, huh? Nothing else was done. Now that's really cool, but how do we kick it up another notch, yo? Now we, excuse me, so far we haven't used any plugins that don't come with After Effects. And technically, like I said, whether you are doing, you could do this in Final Cut, you could do it in Premiere. At this point, we are not uh, editor dependent, right? Or NLE dependent. So the next step, uh, what I did is I said, hey, why don't we animate some stuff behind me? So the first thing that I did is I created a new layer, right? We'll say new layer, solid. On this layer, we're gonna call this sound keys, right? This sound key layer will bring it to the top. And the reason we're bringing the sound key layer, now this is a plugin by Trapcode, right? Uh, the guys over at Red Giant who now own Trapcode, this is one of their plugins. If you drop this onto the, the new solid layer, it then becomes an effect 
The first thing we have to do is tell it what layer is the audio coming from. So switch over here from none to the green screen movie because we're going to use the audio that's in that movie file, right? We have these on-screen controls, which we can turn off by unchecking this eye, and then trap code is, we can just use the keyframes that it creates. But we need this on because what we want to do is we want to tell it, like for example, this is the bass over here, right? So the, one of these two or both of these is what's controlling the kick drum. If we watch, right, I'll just play a little bit of it, maybe from here. Let's set this down to half. Well, let's build a little RAM preview so I can press play so it's more accurate. And if you look at the green jumping up and down on the right, that's hitting to the beat. One of the things we could do, and it's happening on the first range, right? Which by default, you're working in the first range. You can turn on three more ranges. What these ranges do is allow you to build keyframes based on the selections you make in the graph here, which are the different frequencies of whatever track you're referencing, right? If we change the falloff from instant to exponential, what's gonna happen is when it shoots up, it doesn't drop down immediately when the kick disappears. Let's see if you can see the difference here. I'll go ahead and press spacebar. I don't know if you notice it, but the difference now is it's more uh, fluid, it's more relaxed. When it hits its peak, it doesn't drop to zero right away. It's like it's going up and down, kind of like in a rampish fashion. And so exponential is pretty cool here. Once we have the settings we like and this effector is happening in the way we want, we need to click on apply. When we do that, it's gonna take a second. Maybe it's already done. I don't know why that button's still depressed. We'll come over here to the sound keys layer and we'll press U and we'll see output one has keyframes. And these keyframes are a reference to this. Now, if we turn off this layer, we don't need to see that layer. Of course, mind you, real quick, not a this is not a tutorial on sound keys, but if we wanted to keep this uh, this EQ, for example, we could turn off the logarithmic scale, we could turn on the out, turn off the output, and we could just use the EQ. We could resize it, etc. But anyways, we're not going to. But you could do that, right? Next over here, we want to use we want to animate something, right? The sound keys now is just keyframes that we're going to use to animate another layer. So I'll right click, say new, go to solid. And the solid, again, the color actually doesn't matter because it's not going to be used. We're going to apply an effect to it, but we'll just make it red. We're going to call this uh, stroke. The stroke, we can drop below the green skin layer because I want it to happen underneath that. Uh, and actually, let's make this white. I'm going to delete the stroke layer. We'll right click, say new, uh, solid. Let's make it white, actually. And we'll call it stroke again. I'll press enter. I'll drop this below uh, the layer of myself who's dancing, right? And on the stroke layer, we'll come up to effects and presets, and we will look for 3D stroke, which again is by Trapcode and Red Giant. If you have that set of plugins from them, they're super awesome, super useful. I definitely recommend it. So in stroke, number one, you'll notice I, well, my mouse is here. I accidentally touched the top and it zooms. So I'll go back. I'll fit this to 100%. In the stroke uh, effect controls, we are gonna change the preset to basic circle, right? Okay, that's pretty cool, but we want it bigger than that. So we'll come over here to repeater. We'll turn on the repeater and let's set the instances to 10. Boom, now we have this cool, uh, this cool bunch of circles behind me. One of the things you'll notice is this opacity if we mess with the opacity, it brings these different instances on and off. So what we can do is animate the opacity of the repeater with the keyframes from sound keys. In order to do that, come over to opacity, press alt or option on your keyboard, click on the stopwatch. When it does that, it opens up the ability to create, a, to write a, um, what is it called? A... I always forget, expression, there we go. It gives us the ability to write an expression for this particular uh, setting. All we're gonna do is grab this pickwick from the opacity, we're gonna drag this up to the top here, we're gonna look for output and bam. Now, if we go ahead and press play for a second, Boom, now it's animating the opacity on and off. If that's happening too fast, for example, we can come in here and we can change this to divide it by two, to do it uh, half as much affecting based on the keyframes, or we can multiply it or whatever. But let's leave it there. 
Let's again then select the stroke. We're gonna press T on our keyboard to open up the opacity and let's drop this down to, I don't know, 15 or 10 or five, something. We just want this a little bit in the background, huh? And I'm trying to remember, what else did I do? Oh, to myself, I added Shine. Shine is a plugin that allows you to, to bring volumetric light into your scene, right? So we will come over here to the layer that has myself keyed out with the key, with the curves, etc. We'll come over here to effects and presets and we will type in shine. Over here, we've got shine, we'll drag it over here. It then comes underneath the layer right here for curves. By the way, one way that I found out how we could fix, like let's see if we could find it over here somewhere ready. Remember that part that had a little bit of there we go. You see that little bit black right there? We can turn off, for example, the stroke. We can turn off the background. We need it to be a background. Let's bring a white background in just so you can see it easier. I'm going to say solid. We're going to say white. We're going to put this on the bottom and we're going to turn off the blue background. And now you see this right here. One way we could fix it is come over here to silhouette. Let's select the curves layer and press command D on our keyboard to duplicate it. Huh? Now we have two of them. We're going to take one of them. We're going to bring it up to the top or at least we're going to try. There we go. Now it's at the top. On this particular layer, we do not want this to be brought down. So let's reset it. We'll click on reset. Now it's doing nothing. If we click once right there to make a, to make a, I don't know, a selection. This is basically your shadows. This is your highlights. And this is everything in between, right? If we drag this point down from the middle, for example, what we're doing is we're darkening everything. If we drag it up, we're lightening everything. Again, this is not a curves tutorial, but if we just create an instance of this here and then we drag this up to brighten some of the shadows, notice what's happening. We just got rid of that stuff right there. So you could do this, you could not, it's up to you if that bothers you. One of the other things, if we turn this on and off, you'll notice that we're losing some of the volume that is me, right? That is me, is that good English? <laughs> anyway, but hey, you know what? I'm a, I'm a couple pounds overweight, so it's okay. Let's lose some volume, baby. <laughs> That's one way to lose weight. <laughs> Anyways, let's come over here to the shine uh, effect properties. We're going to leave it as a 2D uh, type light source, and we are going to change a couple things. We're going to turn off the white solid, turn on this white background, which actually is now the blue background, right? Because we ended up uh, making some changes, adding the gradient ramp, etc. We'll switch back over here to the silhouette and scroll down to the bottom, and we are going to set under colorize, we are going to change this, right? I don't remember, uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember what I had it set to. Maybe it was radioactive? That's probably what it was. We weren't using the lightness of the layer. In fact, right now, nothing's happening because Shine is saying it's going to base its uh, rays on the lightness. This layer, I'm all black. I'm a silhouette. There is no lightness. However, I am an alpha, right? So this is an alpha channel. So what I can do is base it on the alpha channel, right? Or even cooler, we could say the edges, right? Now, if we set it to the edges, one of the things you're going to notice is we are going to have to pump up the ray length and boost light in order for this to be more prominent, more in your face, right? I don't remember what the settings were. Maybe there were 20 and 25 or something like that. Something to that effect. Remember, we have the stroke turned off with the circles in the background, but that's more or less how I came up with this. I'll press spacebar, let it create a little bit of a RAM preview. I went ahead and stopped it. I'll probably speed that up in post, even though it's like, what, two seconds or something, right? I'll go ahead and press play. So you'll see a lot of things are happening. Those circles in the background are being animated to the kick drum of the track that we're using in this clip. And also this volumetric light is not being animated. But as I move, the idea behind volumetric light is this is what happens when light passes. Uh, it's coming from behind a subject and it basically, it creates volume, right? It shows uh, size, it shows, et cetera, uh, because it's coming from behind an object. And this simulates it and it looks super sexy. You don't have to use radioactive. You can change this to a different setting if you want. The color is up to you. And obviously, you don't have to use these plugins. If you just want to create a silhouette like they did in some of those Apple commercials for the iPod back in the day, then boom, turn off shine, turn off the, uh, where is it, stroke, uh, turn off the background, and boom, you could color the background however you want, and you would get that result. Guys, I hope you liked this tutorial and you found it helpful. If you did, share it with your friends. Like, subscribe, comment. You know the drill. Until next time, guys, I'm out.